Good afternoon, friends. We are here in the Mosaic Backyard Universe at the Bishop Museum of Science and Nature in front of our turtle pond. And tonight, or today, I'm going to read you Follow the Moon Home, a tale of one idea, 20 kids, and 100 sea turtles. And it was written by Philippe Cousteau and Deborah Hopkinson and illustrated by Melo So. Here we go. I always need help finding my way, especially in a new place. Before long, you'll feel right at home, Viv. I wasn't so sure. Welcome, Vivian, called Mr. J. You're just in time for the fun. We're looking for a problem to solve. I got out my pencil and bit my lip. I rode my bike all over town, looking for a problem. Mostly, I just got lost. On Saturday, I took Samson and Luna for a run on the beach. Mostly, they pulled me. Let's make a gigantic hole, I gasped, flopping down. My big digger and my little digger sprang into action. Suddenly, it was raining sand. Looks like fun, but be sure to fill in that hole, said a man walking by. It's nesting season. I smoothed out the sand, and we all went to look. What do holes have to do with turtles? It's because of the babies, said a voice. I whirled to see a girl from my school. I'm Clementine, she reminded me. Baby sea turtles need a clear path to the sea. Holes and sand castles get in their way. I didn't know we had sea turtles here. Samson pulled on the leash. We do. Oh, and look what happened to this baby, cried Clementine. Why were you going the wrong way, little one? Mr. J told us to use our own eyes, so that night, Mom and I went back to the beach. As darkness fell, we could see bright lights winking on, one by one, along the shore. That's it, I said. The lights in the beach houses are the problem. Why is that, Mom asked. When baby turtles hatch, they follow the strongest light they see, I explained. So if they head away from the sea, they get dehydrated and die. My heart sank as I stared at the houses. There are so many. How can we ask all those people to turn off their lights? Most of these houses are vacation rentals, Mom said. That means new people come to stay every few days. We'd have to knock on doors every night. Clearly, I needed help to solve this problem. And I knew just how to get it. On Monday morning, Clementine and I raised our hands first. We told the class what we'd learned and observed about loggerhead sea turtles. The sea turtle eggs are starting to hatch, I went on. To save the hatchlings, we need the whole class, the whole town, to help. And that's how Lights Out for Loggerheads began. Our classroom became the Loggerhead Lab. First, we gathered lots of information. We read books. We visited an aquarium and a sea turtle hospital. We asked someone from the South Carolina Marine Turtle Conservation Program to speak to our class. We all brainstormed solutions.
solutions, choosing the best ideas. Then we got to work. We made posters and delivered them all over town. We wrote fact sheets for all the vacation beach houses. To pay for printing our flyers and posters, we held a bake sale. Andy, the coffee shop man, donated a whole pan of his famous granola. Happy to help. The editor promised to put my article in the community newspaper. Nice to have a new writer in town, she said. The printer gave us a discount for the loggerheads. Rebecca and Max learned how to spread the word on the internet. Mr. J helped us write a press release. I was on TV as class spokesperson. We invited volunteers from Scoot, South Carolina United Turtle Enthusiasts, to a town meeting. When the big night arrived, the room was packed. The room buzzed with ideas. We talked about how to make our beach a great place for turtles, how to mark nests, run nightly patrols, and what to do if hatchlings get in trouble. At the end, we decided to form our own volunteer group. People cheered for our class. Mr. J beamed. I'm proud of you all. That was the best night ever until... On the last evening of summer school, we went on a turtle patrol. Lots of parents came too. Everyone smiled as we watched the lights go along the beach, go out one by one. We had done it. Suddenly, a movement on the sand caught my eye. Over here, I whispered. We crept closer, careful to stay quiet. A crescent moon shone on the waves. The sea glittered like silver. I made out first one, then two hatchlings. Soon the sand seemed to boil over with life. Tiny turtles, no more than two inches long, burst from the nest. We watched, barely daring to breathe. Would they know where to go? Then they were off, scurrying, scurrying over the sand and into the shimmering sea. We stood together, smiling and silent with wonder. Then, just like the turtles, we followed the moon home. The end. What a lovely story. This story goes to show that even as kids, and sometimes we think as kids, we can't do a whole lot. But even as kids, you can solve some of the world's biggest problems. You could even save a whole species of sea turtles in your neighborhood. So I just want to go over really quickly on one of these pages how you solve a problem. So here's the list of the steps. The first thing to do is to identify the problem. So find a problem in your neighborhood, in your class, at home, and decide what you would like to solve. Use your eyes and ask lots of questions. Next, plan. Gather information and figure out what to do. What is your problem? What do you think would make it better? Then take action. Don't just think about how to solve the problem. Really, like, do something about it. Put your ideas into action. The next thing to do is to tell the story. If you do something really awesome for your town, your community, and you don't tell anybody about it, how's anybody going to know? So it's really important to tell your story. Show how you and we can make a difference. And last, 
reflect. Make sure you think about what you did and what you might do next. This problem could be anything. It could be starting a recycling program at your school. It could be, I don't know, maybe in your neighborhood the sea turtles need help as well and we need to shut off the lights wherever you live. It could be anything. Really, the world is your oyster. You can pick anything you like. Thank you so much for joining us for Tales Under the Tree, and we hope to see you next week. Bye-bye.